Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, we're discussing, well, Thailand's jurisprudence. I thought of making this video after reading a recent article from the Thai Examiner, that's thaiexaminer.com. Article is titled, New Zealand Day Brothers Have Landed Back Home in Their Own Country After Four Months in Detention. And I did another video on this. Again, four months in detention for assaulting a police officer. That seems pretty lenient. Uh, by any stretch of my imagination at least, but I'm not going to really get into the thrust of that in this video. This video is going a slightly different direction. Quoting directly, subsequently the pair was arrested by Phuket police. They were charged with obstruction, robbery, and the assault of a police officer. In addition, they appeared before the Phuket Provincial Court on criminal charges. They were refused bail and placed on remand pending their trial. News of their release has come as a surprise to the public. Certainly there is yet to be any official communication on the circumstances involved. Thailand's jurisprudence is somewhat different from that of Western countries. In short, cases including criminal matters can be negotiated between aggrieved parties. However, it is not clear how this matter was resolved legally. Previously, the video of the incident drew mixed reactions. The circumstances involved in the interaction between the men and the policemen were not fully explained. Yeah. So this, going back, in short, cases including criminal matters can be negotiated between aggrieved parties. As we've discussed in other videos, there are private criminal actions here in Thailand. So sometimes a state prosecutor may take up a case, sometimes they may not. Again, one note, one aspect of this is, is restitution has, has, has resonance in the Thai legal system in such a way that it's, it does not have the same resonance in our, our at least from the American common law tradition. Now, that being said, as I've discussed in prior videos, but haven't discussed in some time, there is no such thing like a, as a plea deal equivalent to plea deals in the American system. I think this comes somewhat from the lack of equity in the legal system here in Thailand. Again, don't want to go too deep into this, but equity sort of got intertwined with legal reasoning, sort of equity law, law of equity, and then legal reasoning or legal power sort of got intertwined in the common law system. And that comes about as, you know, basically from the time Henry VIII left the Catholic Church, you had these things called the courts, the ecclesiastical courts. They became what were called the courts of the king's conscience. Those then got intertwined with the law courts as time went on. Then that tradition was inherited by the American legal tradition. And so we see plea dealings plea dealings in the context of American jurisprudence is, is a common thing. And it, and it comes about from this sort of intermixture between law and equity or fairness, if you will. None of that exists in the Thai system. So again, plea deals are not a thing. A, a plea bargain, if you will, is not a thing, strictly speaking, in Thailand. However, they do have other mechanisms, things like restitution sometimes, maybe an effective means of mitigating sentencing, etc. That may have occurred here. I would have to imagine we would be talking about really major substantial negotiations would have to be undergone. And, and again, I don't know the full posture of this case. I don't know how it was finally and fully adjudicated, if it was at all. So again, these are some things that we, these are data points we don't really have with respect to exactly how this played out. That said, we'll certainly keep you updated on this channel as the situation evolves. 